Hey man, what kind of what kind of weapon is this? I'm a uh, I'm not familiar. No man, that's for uh, mini painting. No, I'd say it's more of a mini chucking crossbow. One of the most exciting aspects of our miniature hobby is that feeling of discovery. The aha moment when we learn about a new painting technique that we think will level us up. Or maybe it's finally getting that breakthrough moment where we figured out how to paint something like skin or metals. And maybe it's even finding out about a new hobby product that we think will make our lives easier or our paint jobs even better. But scattered throughout our miniature hobby battlefield are landmines. Products that are not worth our time and hard-earned money. So today, we're going to expose some of these products that are just terrible at what they were designed to do or are simply more expensive versions of things we could get elsewhere. And this goes without saying, but this is my personal opinion based on my first-hand experience. So if you use any of these products and like them, don't feel like you're any less of a miniature painter or that I'm telling you to stop. This is me just trying to hold back the inevitable tide of rage in the comments section. All right, first up is a nail polish shaker. When I first got into miniature painting, I thought this thing would make sure all my paints were thoroughly shooken up and so they would always be super smooth. Unfortunately, this thing is so stinking weak and many of our paints are fairly thick that even with an agitator ball inside my paints, this thing did literally next to nothing. It was a waste of money and it's been sitting in my cupboard for years. What do I use instead? Well, I upgraded to a Vortex mixer and while these things are more expensive, they seriously do shake your paints well in a much quicker amount of time. Do you need either of these? No, you don't to paint miniatures. You can just shake the paints by hand, but if you're gonna spend money on something to shake your paints, go with a Vortex mixer, not this glittery piece of garbage. And then we've got Liquid Green Stuff, a product that is advertised as a great use for filling small gaps and cracks in our models before we prime them, and it just does this horribly. It shrinks so much and it leaves a nice little edge where it does shrink, so you've created more funny textures on your models than you had to begin with, so it's terrible at it. So what do I use instead? Well, if you're dealing with plastic models, I always prefer sprue goo, which is a homemade substance you can make with plastic cement. In my video linked in the corner there, I'll show you how I actually make it and how it's applied. But this stuff for plastic models is so much better than anything else. If you're dealing with resin or 3D printed models, I recently discovered using the resin from my 3D printer and a UV light actually helps me create a nice smooth surface by filling in the gaps with the resin and then coming back in with my UV light to cure that resin. You can then go over it with a little bit of a Q-tip with alcohol on it to smooth everything out. And before you know it, it looks like your multi-part resin kit was actually cast from a single bit. All right, how about spray paint? Sure, you're telling me that it's not worth $20? to get Games Workshop spray paint in a rattle can? Pfft, of course it's worth that much money. It's, it's, it's spray paint. Or maybe Army Painter, which is cheaper, but uh, terrible. That's why I prefer just that. Rust-Oleum, Krylon, whatever. The paint and primer in one is great. The key to these is just like the key to these. You just need to be careful you don't hose down your model and you're going across it with nice smooth sprays. But this stuff, at a fraction of the price is just great. And they come in such a wide variety of colors these days and really nice metallic. So you don't have to feel limited in your choices in rattle can colors. All right, here's a fun one, fake sand and rocks. They want you to buy stuff you can get for free. But equally important is the actual size of these things. See, they go through a series of strainers to make sure they're all the same size. And that's a problem. In the real world, all the rocks that you see next to a cliff face or on the base of your model walking through the dirt shouldn't all be the same size. It looks weird. It looks wrong. So what do we do? We use real dirt. 
you can go to your yard or to a park and you can grab a small Tupperware container filled with this stuff, put it in your oven at a low temperature for about an hour to kill any little bugs or bacteria in there, and then you are feel free to use it on all your models. It has a much more natural variation in texture, sizes, and shapes, and it's gonna make your models look better. Some other stuff here I use often is a bit of gravel from my driveway if I need some bigger stones. And I actually use tea leaves from an instant tea packet to have some nice ground cover. It feels very natural like leaves or wood debris that I can sprinkle on my mini bases. So yeah, buying fake rocks that are in some big uniform container like this, not worth the money. All right, my next one I can't actually show you because I think it's somewhere in my storage room where it's been for years and I can't seem to find it. And that's a light box. We're often told that using a light box will allow us to take awesome pictures of our miniatures. And I'm here to tell you, it really doesn't do much. All a light box does is it gives you diffusion over the light that is pushed inside the box. But diffusion is the key here, not the box. So all you really need is diffusion on the hobby lights you already have and to place them off to the side and in front of the model to give you a good angle. Now, in terms of actual diffusion, there's a couple things that I've used. This stuff is called dress liner fabric. It's super cheap at a fabric store and it gives you nice diffusion on your light for very cheap. And you can cut this stuff to have a couple of squares, tape it to the sides of your light every time you wanna take pictures and you're good to go. The next option is a China ball. These you can put right over the light itself and it diffuses it nicely. If you're using really bright lights to paint under, you can put these over your painting lights all the time as well to give you a more soft uniform light. But these are a quick and easy way as well. All right, let's talk about model holders. Now this one is a minor one, but I would be remiss if I didn't give you my true opinion on this. There's a lot of different brands and there's a lot of different ways you can hold your mini while you're painting. And I prefer to not use the Games Workshop handles. Them clipping across the sides of the miniature's base means it's easy to get them on and off while you're painting. But the problem lies in that clipping mechanism. If the model is clipped on the sides here, it means I don't have full access to the sides of the base rim. That means when I'm priming the model, those little parts of the base rim are not going to get primed. And then later on, when I want to paint that base rim so it's a nice crisp black, I've gotta take the model off of the holder and paint them separately. Like I said, this is a minor gripe, but to me, if the whole purpose of a miniature paint holder is to be allowing me to paint my miniature start to finish, shouldn't it do that? Miniature holders from other companies don't have this problem and just using a dowel that I cut up and put some double-sided foam tape on it doesn't have this problem either. Do I think these are the worst product in the world? No, not by a long shot. But if I prefer a five cent piece of wood with foam tape on it to your $10 painting handle, I think the engineering department should go back to the drawing board. Today's video is brought to us by Umbrella Games, the number one place for us Americans and Canadians to buy all our hobby and gaming products online. Umbrella Games is a store for miniature painters run by miniature painters. Not only do they have just about every brand under the sun, but they're super helpful. So it's just like you have a friendly local game store online. But the best part is their industry leading prices. If you use my affiliate link in the video description below, you get an additional 5% off of their already low prices. This means that almost everything they carry is 20% off of MSRP. Oh, and because it's an affiliate link, you're also supporting me while you're purchasing and saving. And if all that wasn't incentive enough to give them a try, they're doing a giveaway. Just for the people that use my affiliate link below, at the end of January, they will draw a name and send you out a free gobsprack model, which is pretty sick and pretty freaking big. They're also giving away a copy of Warhammer Underworld's Hero Deep to one of the members of the Ninjan Patreon at the end of the month as well. So if you ever thought about joining us over there, now's the time. A big thank you to Umbrella Games for helping me buy everything I need for the hobby and for supporting the channel. Make sure you bookmark the link below so anytime in the future you need to buy some hobby goodies, you've got it right at your fingertips. Next. 
I want to talk about paint brushes. So you can spend a good amount of money getting paint brushes from a variety of sources. In my experience, if you're buying your paint brushes from the company that makes the game that you're playing, you're probably overpaying for an inferior product. So which ones do I go for? They fall into two categories. The first one are actual high quality paintbrush companies that have been doing this for generations that just happen to have brushes that work great for us. Windsor & Newton is a great example, as well as Raphael 8404. Those are amazing paintbrushes. Next, there are a few companies that I really enjoy their products. They're hobby companies, but they really give me a nice quality brush. And that would be Broken Toad, as well as Monument Hobbies, both their sable and their synthetic brushes are really high quality for the price that I pay. All right, here's a fun one. Airbrush cleaner. This stuff is a waste of money. If I'm acting quickly while I'm cleaning out my airbrush, the best thing that I can do is just rinse it quickly with water and pull out some of that dried material. After I've done that a couple of times, I can go straight in with some pure isopropyl alcohol to make sure it is get that deep clean at the very end and then flush it out again with water so that isopropyl alcohol doesn't dry out any of the internal compartments of my airbrush. But if you'd rather use an airbrush cleaner instead of water, you can make your own. And I've done this a number of times over the years. I'm too lazy to do it anymore, but you can certainly do that. All you need is a mix of 70% distilled water with 30% ammonia-free glass cleaner. You put that in a nice little jug, and then to add to that, you're gonna put in about three tablespoons of isopropyl alcohol, and then about six drops of vegetable glycerin. Now here's the only problem with doing this yourself is you got to come up with the glycerin. Now you don't necessarily need to add this, but this kind of creates a nice lubrication to your airbrush so stuff doesn't get stuck to it on the inside without making it tacky or sticky. And this stuff isn't cheap. You could certainly make the same mix and leave out the glycerin and it would work just fine as well. All right, I really wanted to avoid talking about miniature paints in this video. There's amazing brands and amazing colors across all ranges, but there was one culprit that I could not avoid talking about, and that is the Whites by Games Workshop. White Scar and Ceramite White specifically are the worst miniature paints I have ever used and ever seen. And I've never come across a single person that has used these whites and enjoyed the process. So what do I recommend instead? My favorite white by a long shot for miniature painting is Pro Acryl's Bold Titanium White. I've spoken his praises many times. If you need a white, this is the white to buy. I also will use some heavy body acrylic whites if I want to mix them with a nice thick white or to have a pure opaque dot of white on a model. These are my go-to. And then finally, having a good white ink in your back pocket is always a good thing. Whether you're airbrushing it for zenithling your models or you just need a nice smooth dot or line with pure white, this stuff is nice and fluid. All right, let's talk about the mold line remover by Games Workshop. Do not buy this thing. The whole purpose of this is to remove those mold lines on our plastic models. It doesn't do a terrible job over large, flat surfaces, but whenever you're getting to a part of the model where it's in a crease or a crevice or a small section, it simply can't fit. It's too fat and too wide, and our models are tiny. So most of the time, this thing is absolutely useless. So instead, just use a standard hobby knife to clean up your models. I like to make sure mine is a little bit dull so I don't accidentally gouge into them. There are also ones by a variety of companies, like safety ones like this, so your kids don't stab themselves. And then you can finish up cleaning of your models with these wonderful sanding sticks, one of my favorite products in all of miniature painting. All right, our last one to talk about is this monstrosity. This is known as the priming stick by Games Workshop. And I swear to God, Games Workshop makes a lot of really good products, but I guess if you just make so much stuff, you're bound to make some really stupid things too. The whole point of this thing is to allow you to prime multiple models at the same time. And for $25, it should damn well prime them for me. I mean, at this point, I kind of feel like they're mocking us. Like how dumb are people gonna be that they'll spend money on something that's literally the same thing as a free stir stick 
from the hardware store that I put a little sticky tape or blue tack on and prime my models. It's, I mean, people buy it. So, and it looks like you could prime 10 models at the same time with this thing. So it's really efficient, right? No, I primed about 40 models at the same time with this scrap piece of wood and some foam tape. I mean, anything that feels as gimmicky as this, you should just keep walking. Don't second guess and say, oh, maybe I need that. No, you don't need that. You, you, you don't, you don't need that. Well, now I'm thoroughly worked up, so it's probably a good time for us to stop talking about the worthless hobby products in the market today. But what say you? Did I forget any? Did I miss any glaring products that are utter garbage that you know about? Or maybe you think I'm wrong about any of the things I talked about today. I'm interested in your honest opinions. Please let me know down in the comments. I appreciate you hanging out today. You know, we've all got a finite amount of hobby dollars to spend. And the last thing I want is you guys to be spending your hobby bucks on garbage. If you wanted to pick up any hobby products that are actually good, you could try looking at my affiliate list links in the video description and that supports the channel so I appreciate all of you that use those links. You can also support me to make more videos by joining the Ninjan Patreon. Check the link below and see all the awesome rewards you get for joining us over there. I'll see you again real soon for the next video and sometime between now and then make sure you get out there and slay the gray. Yeah, this thing is this thing is pretty sweet. This thing kind of makes me feel like Daryl from Walking Dead. Think of this as quality control to make sure the pieces aren't gonna break when you're playing your nerd games.